Okay, uh, let's get started. So the topic for today's lecture is uh, single act and multi act games. But before that, I wanted to ask if there is any question on the assignment, assignment one. No questions. Okay. Okay. So let's start with a single act game. But before we start, I wanted to uh, start with a definition. So a dynamic uh, a game in which action of player one or not player one but player i affects the information of player j okay so that's the definition of a dynamic game so we are now some single act games can be a dynamic game okay or it could be a static game oh, so a static game is a game in which uh, an action of oh, this static game not a dynamic game or equivalently Uh, action of any player does not affect the information of any player. Okay, so the action should not affect the information of any player. So is the definition clear? Okay, if my action affects your observation or your information, then it becomes a dynamic process, dynamic decision process or a dynamic game. If my action doesn't affect your information, then it's no more a dynamic game, it becomes a static game or vice versa, right? Your, your action should not affect my information and my action should not affect your information, then that becomes a static game, okay? So, so far, we were discussing static game because both the players were acting simultaneously. So, there was no option of one player's action affecting someone else's information. But let's look at a game in which that's not the case. So this is uh, player one, he has an action top and bottom and then player two acts and player two has three actions L, M, R, L, M, R, okay and this is player two. Okay, and I write the payoff, so it's a zero sum game. So that's one, three, zero, and six, two, seven. Okay, so let's look at this. So this is known as a game in extensive form. So what this game does, what this representation of the game does, is it tells you which player acts when and what's the information available to the player. So player one acts first in this case and it player one has no information whatsoever. Okay, it has to choose an action T and B in this case, okay, top and bottom. And 
by this dotted line, what I'm saying is if player two doesn't know whether he is standing at this node or at this node. Okay. So player two doesn't know whether player one played T or B. Okay. So player two's information is not affected by player's one action in this case. And this is a static game. On the other hand, I'll draw the same tree. Player one acts first, top, bottom. Okay, and player two acts next. And in this case, player two knows which node he is standing at. So if player one plays T, player two knows that he's standing at this node. If player one acts according to B, I mean player one chooses B as its action, it knows that it's standing at this particular node. And so LMR, LMR, these are the three actions and it's the same payoff. Okay, and this is a single act game because each player acts only once. Okay, single act game. Each player acts once. Yes, it's equivalent to both of them acting simultaneously. Okay, that's what I was getting at. Okay, so even though there is a temporal axis here, where I'm saying player one acted first and player two acted second, because player two doesn't know what player one's action was, it is equivalent to saying that player one and player two acted simultaneously. Okay, whereas in this case, that's not the case. Player one acted first and now player two knows exactly what player one's action was. And so it knows what the payoff would be uh, depending upon whether he chooses L, M or R. Okay, so let's try and identify what the equilibrium of this game is going to be. So let's write the payoff matrix here. And the payoff matrix is, this is player one, top, bottom, L, M, R, one, three, zero. 6, 2, 7, and player 1 wants to minimize. Player 1 is minimizer. Okay, so there is a mixed strategy equilibrium. It doesn't have a pure strategy equilibrium. If you look at the security level of the two players, it doesn't match, okay? So it doesn't have a pure strategy equilibrium, but it has a mixed strategy equilibrium, which is given by P star equals two over three, one over three, and Q star equals one over three, two over three, and zero. Okay, so now we want to, is this, is this clear? Okay, this is a fairly simple way of calculating uh, saddle point equilibrium. You put it in the linear program, you solve it, you get the saddle point equilibrium. Uh, nothing fancy here. Now look at this game. Okay, now there is strategic interaction here because now player one knows that player two will know what action he has taken. So now he has to choose his action, not according to this fashion, but according to some other strategic considerations. So let's say player one chose T, 
what is player 2 going to do? So what's the payoff matrix of player 2? P1 choose ST 1 3 0 okay and given that player 2 wants to maximize the pay, the the co i mean the cost to player 1 player 2 is going to choose m okay now if p1 chooses b player 2 is going to choose r Okay. So my question is so uh, okay. So my question is what is player 1 going to choose knowing that player 2 is going to choose m if player 1 chooses t and player 1 and player 2 is going to choose r if player 1 chooses b. So what's going to be player 1's choice? T, right? So P1 would choose T. Okay? In this case, the value, if you compute the value, the value is 8 over 3, so value of mixed strategy, or just write it as V. V is equal to 8 over 3, whereas in this case, the value of the game is 3, right? So value is the evaluation of the expected cost at saddle point equilibrium. The value changes. The value increased a little bit of the game. So player 1 loses a little bit more money in this case and player 2 gains a little bit more money in, in this case when player 2 has more information than this case, okay? So once you change the amount of information that players have, their payoffs would also change or their costs would also change, okay? So that's number one uh, thing. But the second thing that I want to talk about in this case is how would you write the saddle point equilibrium? So the way you write the saddle point equilibrium is using strategy, so not action anymore, strategy, so gamma 1 star is equal to T and gamma 2 star if U1, U1 is the action of player 1, so if U1 or A1, let's call it A1, A1 is equal to T, then it's M and gamma 2 star A1 equals to B equals to R. Okay, so this is my saddle point. saddle point equilibrium. So whenever you have uh, games in which in which the information I mean in which there is some information available to some of the players you don't necessarily talk about individual actions what you talk about is strategies. How are the players going to behave? How are they going to choose what actions they are going to take at individual time steps? Uh, and what's the decision rule? How, what is the rule that they will apply in order, to, in order to choose what their action should be at specific times, at specific points of time? But the other thing that you want to see or notice here is that even though player 1 is always going to choose T, player 2 or in other words, player 1 is going to choose B with probability 0, player 2 needs to specify what happens if he gets, in, gets onto a node, if he 
figures out that he's at a node which is occurring with probability zero. Okay, so again, I want to repeat myself. Gamma one star is equal to T with probability one, in which case gamma one star is equal to B with probability zero. But player two needs to specify what it will do, what he or she will do, if player one acted according to this action B. Okay, so that's that's required here. That's required in the in the definition of strategies. You have to say what action you will take at, I at each individual realization of the information, no matter what the probability of that information occurring during the game is equal to zero or not. It doesn't matter. Okay, it has to, by definition, it has to specify how it's going to behave at probability zero events during the game. Okay, so is this clear to everyone? Fairly simple. Now, second thing that I want to uh, ask you is suppose you want to act, suppose each player wants to act according to pure strategy. Uh, what do I mean by pure strategy? At each information set, the player has to pick an action deterministically. Okay, so if P2 is at this point, it has to pick L. So, okay, so no, my question is uh, I want to identify the set of pure strategies. Okay, so what is the set of pure strategies for this game? Okay, this game we know LMR is the set of pure strategy and TB is the set of pure strategy for player one. So let's look at what the set of pure strategy for this particular game is. So pure strategies of player one okay so pure strategies when the players are going to act deterministically so there is no randomization whatsoever what are the pure strategies of player two? Okay, how many pure strategies would player two have? So it's the set of set of all gamma that maps T comma B L M R. Can someone tell me how many such gammas are there? Nine, right? So number of, so if you look at the functions from X to Y, the size of the set is uh, number of elements in Y raised to number of elements in X, okay? So that's the number of functions from x to y. So the number of gammas from TB to LMR is nine. So you have nine pure strategies for player two. So nine pure strategies for player two in this case. Yeah. Player one always acts before player two, so why do we count all the combinations? 
all the combinations here? Yes. Uh, what do you mean? Player 1 can play according to T or player 1 can play according to B? Yes, but that will not use all the... Nine is all... So let's see, let's see what those nine strategies are. So gamma 2, 1 equal to... Actually, I shouldn't put star here because I'm not talking about Nash equilibrium or saddle point equilibrium here. So those are just enumerating all the pure strategies. So one pure strategy is L, no matter what the information is, is equal to M, is equal to R. So no matter what the information is, I'm going to play L. No matter what the information is, I'm going to play M. No matter what the information is, I'm going to play R. So that's one, that's three strategies right there. And then, two, four, A, one is L if A one equals to T and M if A one equals to B. Then gamma two, five, a1 is M if A1 equals to T, L if A1 equals to B, what else? L, yeah, L, R, so gamma 2, 5, 6, A1, L, R, and then gamma 2, 7, R L and then gamma to eight. What are we missing? M R M R and gamma to nine R M. Okay, so these are the nine pure strategies that player two has. Okay, so you see how Having even a small set of information can increase the number of strategies that the player 2 can use. Right? In the previous case, when he did not, player 2 did not know whether it is at this node or at this node, it had only three actions, L, M, R. But now, because he has some information, the number of strategies ha has exploded. Okay. So that's uh, so. This brings me to what is known as games in normal form. Okay, so gamma 2 comma 1, gamma 2 comma 2, gamma 2 comma 3. Okay, now what we need to do, so what, so what is this? This is a finite game, this is a matrix game where the rows are pure strategies of player one and columns are pure strategies of player two. Okay? And based on what these payoffs are, you can fill in those elements and I don't know whether I want to do that <laughs> in the class. So let's skip it. But anyway, by looking at this, looking at this, let's let me do uh, let me do 
do it for gamma 2 4 okay so so gamma 2 4 so if a 1 is equal to t then it takes l so if a 1 is equal to t it takes l so that's 1 here and when gamma 1 2 is equal to b then player 1 picks m so that's equal to 3 Oh, B. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two. So, all of you have understood this, right? How to construct this matrix. Now, I want to ask you a question. Doesn't that look like a static game? Remember, this is a dynamic game. This, ha this game has P2, P1's action affects the information of P2. So this is a dynamic game. But doesn't this look like a game in which two people act simultaneously instead of one acting after another? Right? So in a normal form, it's, it's much bigger than the original game, right? In original game, you had only six outcomes. Now, I don't know how many outcomes you have. You have like 9 into 2, 18 outcomes, right? So in normal form, what you do is you suppress the dynamic nature of the decision process, okay? So you have suppressed the dynamic nature of the game and how could you do that why could you do that in this case you just enumerated all these strategies of the players okay all the pure strategies of the player and therefore you created a matrix and you suppress the dynamic nature of the game into a static game okay this is a static game okay and suppose uh, what was the equilibrium strategy here? Anyone remembers? Gamma 1 star was T and gamma 2 star, what was it? M and R. Where is MR? So gamma 2, 8. So this is the saddle point equilibrium. That's the saddle point equilibrium. And so what you now have is you converted a dynamic game into a static game and you found out what the equilibrium in this static game is and it turned out to be, it'll turn out to be exactly uh, the same as what you had found here by arguing about the dynamic nature of the information. Okay, so the equilibrium didn't change because it was an equilibrium in pure strategies, okay, in the original uh, game. So, so these are known as pure strategies. Let's talk about mixed strategies. So mixed strategies are probability distributions over pure strategies. Okay, so mixed strategy. So pure is gamma i is a function from the information set of i to its action set. Let me call the action set as a i. So this is my action set. That's pure strategy. Mixed strategy. is mu which is a probability distribution over all pure strategy so this is mu okay So 
of course, this game is a special game where we had an equilibrium in pure strategies, but in general, you may or may not have equilibrium in pure strategies, but what do we know? We know that every finite matrix game admits a saddle point equilibrium for zero sum, right? And for non-zero sum, we know that every bimatrix game or howsoever the number of players are, doesn't matter. As long as you have a finite game, you have an equilibrium in mixed strategy, right? So that's the result here. So every single act game, as long as it's a finite game, no matter what the information is, you can always come up with a game in normal form and you can find an equilibrium in mixed strategies using one of those algorithms that we talked about. Okay, so that's one result. What did we lose here? We lost the dynamic nature of the original decision process. Okay, so original decision process was dynamic. I transformed into a static game and then I found out a mixed strategy. Okay, and let's say we have a game where you have enumerated all this and an equilibrium comes out to be mu1 star is let's say half gamma 1 1 plus half gamma 1 2 I don't want to write it this way let's say it's gamma 1 1 with probability half gamma 1 2 with probability half and let's say mu2 star turned out to be gamma 2 3 with probability one third gamma 2 6 with probability 1 by 6 and gamma 2 8 with probability 1 by 2. Okay, let's say you defined a game and this is what the what the equilibrium, saddle point equilibrium in mixed strategy turn out to be. Suppose this was your suppose you were player one, how would you execute this strategy? Okay, you are playing a game, you had a dynamic process, you said okay fine, I'm gonna convert it into normal form and you computed your mixed strategy and you computed the other player's mixed strategy. Okay, how are you going to play according to this mixed strategy if you were player one? Any thoughts? Toss a coin at the beginning of the game and let's say it turned out to be gamma one one, so you are going to act according to T, right? How is player two going to decide? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, roll a die. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So roll a die, right? And suppose gamma 2, 6 appeared as the realized strategy, then, you are, then the player is going to act according to gamma 2, 6, whatever it was. Now, when is player 2 going to roll a die? Would it be at this time when the game has not started or would it be at this stage where the game is already underway? before the game starts, right? So, so in this dynamic decision problem or in this dynamic game problem, you convert it into a static problem, even before the game started, you either roll a die or toss a coin and you figured out what your strategy was, right? Uh, according to the realization and you played according to that strategy and you did not go back when you reach this stage you did not go back and start revising your strategy, okay? So once you fix the strategy at the beginning of the game, you are going to execute exactly that strategy without going back at this point of time and say, well, you know, maybe I screwed up. Let's go back and change my strategy, okay? You can't do that. So that's the way you play a game. So that's the way you solve a game in normal form and that's how you play it. I mean, I mean, this is what the equilibrium turned out to be. 
Yeah, in, in Select Game, if, if the actor does, uh, doesn't follow the, uh, the, the property, uh, the equilibrium property, he will uh, lose more. But in this case, if he didn't follow this property, what is the consequences of this? Right, but that's what is the definition of equilibrium, right? No player has an incentive to deviate even during the game. Okay. That's because he is expecting player 1 to act according to this strategy. So this is the best response for him. And maybe one time he is going to lose. But in other times he is going to make up for that loss if he plays, if he sticks to this particular strategy. But he could have one on for all the, all the stages. I mean, if he, he, he gets useful from the formation of the player 1 right. uh, game, uh, game, he can uh, give gain at each stage of the game. No, that's the definition of equilibrium. You cannot gain by going back and keep, keep doing replanning. That doesn't, that doesn't uh, help you in these particular games. Okay. Basically, when you, are, when you are outlining this normal form, you essentially have figured out what your plan of action is at each point of time. And this is what the equilibrium turned out to be in normal form and then you will just stick to that equilibrium. There is another game, th there is another way to play the exact same game which is using behavioral strategies which is what I will come to now, I mean in some time. And there you have the option of picking what strategy you want to use as the game progresses. Okay, so that is different from normal form games. Okay, now let's talk about let's talk about uh, uh, non-zero sum game, also single act. Any other question? So I want to Yeah. Can you can you speak louder? Yes, mu one, mu two star is an equilibrium. Yes, you can have games in which you could have mixed strategy equilibrium and pure strategy equilibrium. Okay, so let's uh, look at this single act game. So P1 as this is P1 acting, P2 has two strategies, uh, two actions LR, LR, LR. Okay, and 0, negative 1, minus 2, 1. Okay, so in this case, what happens? So let's say you are player one and I give you a homework. Okay, and you do the homework and submit it in the classroom. 
you don't do the homework because you were busy with your qualifying examination and you don't do homework because you were watching Netflix. Okay? All I observe is you haven't done the homework. Right? So I'm player two. This is player two here. So I'm player two here. So here is a case where I can distinguish between whether you have done the homework or you have not done the homework. But if you have not done the homework, I cannot distinguish whether it was for a legitimate academic reason or whether you were watching Game of Thrones on Netflix. Okay, Game of Thrones is not there on Netflix. <laughs> you, you guys have very poor general knowledge. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, I checked it yesterday. Uh, <laughs> So, so, so that's, the, that's the information set here. Uh, so how do we solve this game? So let's look at what happens when player 1 plays L. So P1 plays L. Then what is player 2 going to? So this is cost, this is cost, func cost, cost tuple. So player 2 wants to minimize its cost. Okay, so this is player 2's cost if he plays L, and this is player 2's cost if he plays R. So he's always going to play L, right? Because it's negative 1. So gamma 2 of A1 equals L is L. Okay, now let's look at P2 plays. M or R. Oh, P1. So if P1 plays M and P2 plays L, 3, 2. So 3. Two, and then M and R is zero three. M and R is zero three, and then two one, and then minus no two one, and then minus one zero. This is P one cost. This is P two cost. And let me tell you what the Nash equilibrium of this is. It's this one and this one. This is the Nash equilibrium. So why is this a Nash equilibrium? So if player if player two picks R, then this is giving the least cost to player one. And if player two picks player one picks this. Uh, action R, then player 2 has minimum cost if he picks R2. Right, so in this case, gamma 2, A2 equals to M or R is equal to R. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. R. It's actually R. Right. So, so what is player one going to play then? Uh, what's the cost? What's the cost to player one? It's negative one. J star equals to J two star is equal to zero. In this case, J one star is going to be equal to 0 and j2 star is going to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so that's the cost. So what is player 1 going to pick? L. L. Remember player 1 is minimizer. He wants to minimize. Player 1 will play R, right? Player 1 will play R. So what I have as equilibrium for this particular game is 
where do I write the equilibrium? Let me write it here. Gamma 1 star is R. And remember, player 1 has no information, so this is just going to be R. And gamma 2 star is going to be, as a function of A1, is going to be L if A1 equals to L and R if A1 equals to M or R, right? Uh, let me delete this. Okay, so again you see here that even though player 1 will never use L, player 2 still has to specify what he will do should player 1 choose L. Okay, so that's, that has to be done. That's very much part of decide, deciding what your strategy would be when you are going to play. So you should, I mean in general in life, you should always plan for probability 0 events as well. Okay, that's the idea behind this. What's the probability that there will be an earthquake in Columbus? Zero, right? But we still have to prepare for earthquake uh, should it arise in this city. So, so far we talked about single act games and we figured out how to find equilibrium in single act games. So, the idea was I have a single act game, I am going to transform it into no normal, normal form where I am going to enumerate all the pure strategies and I am going to get this huge matrix and then I am going to mix among all my pure strategies. Okay? So, the key idea was transform uh, original dynamic game into normal form, which is a static game and find equilibrium in mixed strategies. Okay, and you can do it for single act, you can do it for uh, multi-act games, it doesn't matter. As long as the game is finite, you have a guarantee because of Nash's existence result that you will always be able to find an equilibrium in mixed strategies. Okay. Now let's study, but what did we do in this process? We have reduced the original dynamic game into a static game, right? And in this case, even if you mix your strategy, you essentially toss a coin at the first time step, I mean before the game starts, and then you just act according to a pure strategy for the rest of the game. Now there is another idea that you can use, which is you player I at time P acts according to a strategy gamma I T based on its information, let's say I I T, which uh, is a probability distribution over its action set. And this is known as behavioral strategy.
gamma i t uh, so every time it's an independent randomization so you don't use the same remember in this the random variable is realized at the beginning of time in this case you generate a new random variable every time you have to act okay So you randomize before you start the play. In this case, you randomize at every time you have to make a decision, you essentially randomize. So that's behavioral strategy. And it so turns out that pure strategy is a subset of behavioral strategy. And it's a subset of mixed strategy. So even though you feel that this should be more general than mixed strategy, it's actually not. Behavioral strategy is a subset of mixed strategy. Okay. Any questions so far? So what have we done so far? We have studied single act games where each player acts once. Multi act games, you can have multiple players acting over multiple periods of time. You can have information structure. Uh, that is the information available to each player in some very complex fashion. So to give you an example, uh, this is just an example. I'm not going to solve this game, but I want to show you what kind of information structure you can have in multi-act games, which will be much more complicated. OK, and this is P1, this is P2, and this is P1 again at the third stage. And you can have P1. Okay, so this is P1. So P1 doesn't know when he's acting twice at the second time step, P1 doesn't know whether he acted according to this or he acted according to this and P2 acted according to this. Okay, at this particular information set. So you can have these complex information structure in multi-act games where player one doesn't know where exactly he stands depending upon whatever observations he has made so far. So player one would know whether player one has played R in the past and player two has played R in the past. But for all other combinations, player one doesn't know what he played in the past and what the other player had played in the past. Okay, so this is P2 acting L, R, L. So player one doesn't know whether he's standing at L, L or L, R or RL, okay? All he knows is whether he's standing at RR or he's standing at one of these three nodes. Okay, so you can have all these uh, sophisticated uh, information structure, but what do we do? We transform this into a normal form static game and you find equilibrium in mixed strategies and that's it, you are done. Okay, you can use that strategy as a way of playing this particular game. Okay, so let me go through a few definitions of different classes of games. All of you understand behavioral strategy, right? So each person at every point of time independently randomizes among the possible actions that he has at that particular time. game with 
परफेक्ट इंफॉर्मेशन ईच प्लेयर नोज दी एक्शंस ऑफ द प्लेयर्स हु एक्टेड एक्टेड इन द पास्ट so that's a perfect information at every point of time you know which node you are standing at okay there is no confusion whatsoever then you have a perfect recall so perfect recall is little tricky each player remember its past information and past actions so what's the difference between the two perfect information i know the action my past actions and i know your past actions and anyone else who has acted in the past i know everyone's action okay fairly strong assumption perfect recall not that strong all i need to remember is my past information and my past actions okay that's it that's all i need to know okay and then there is this game in feedback form where i'll introduce the definition by a picture so so let's look at this game in feedback form player 1 So suppose there are two players player 2 may be confused about his about his note that's not a problem but player 1 whenever he acts he should know exactly where he is standing this is player 1 and let's say player 2 wants to act again player 2 will know player 2 can be confused among the nodes which is below p1 but not intersecting with other nodes that is emanating from p1 at a different information structure so all he can be confused is so if p1 is at this node all he can be confused is whether he is standing at this node and this node he cannot be confused between this node this node and this node because this node comes after the other information set of p1 okay so it's a bit bit tricky okay let let me go go back to the definition of game in feedback form so p1 always knows exactly which node he is standing at okay there is no confusion p2 is allowed to be confused okay but he is not allowed to be confused in a different fashion so these are two separate information structure for p1 so p2 cannot be confused between this node this node this node or this this and this node okay all he can be confused is between this node and this node because it coming from the same information structure of p1 okay so that's the game in feedback form p1 has perfect information 
पी टू कैन बी कंफ्यूज बट डॉट 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 आई डोंट नो हाउ टू राइट इट इन वर्ड ओके so what's the benefit of game in feedback form can someone look at this look at this game and tell me why this game is is better than perfect information is excellent okay no problem whatsoever what about game in feedback form is it easy to compute an equilibrium in feedback form we can start bottom up okay for computing equilibrium so we can compute the equilibrium of this game use the expected payoff as a leaf of this particular uh, uh, node and then you can compute the equilibrium of this game same thing you can compute the equilibrium of this game right and then you can feed it forward Or, or rather feed it back and you can write that as payoff here the expected payoff from these games can be written as payoffs here and then you can compute the payoff of the game above it okay so that's known as dynamic programming how many of you have heard of dynamic programming right many of you so you start from the final stage you compute the solution then you move backwards so that's what you are doing in this game of feedback games games in feedback form okay you are going you solve the final stage game first then use that as expected payoffs for the next uh, the first stage of the game and if it is like multiple if there are multiple stages then you can keep doing that over and over again to compute the equilibrium of the game okay so the next main result comes from kuhn's theorem that i'll discuss in the next class which says the following so i want to explain the context of that game uh, of that uh, result so multi act game converted to normal form converted to mixed strategy right so you have a multi act game you convert it to normal form you know that there exists a solution in mixed strategy what kuhn's theorem says Nineteen fifty-three. If I'm if I'm not if I'm correct, then Kuhn was also a mathematician uh, in Princeton. Okay, and and he was a co-worker of Nash, or maybe he was a little bit junior or something. Okay. So what Kuhn's theorem says. Consider a game of perfect. recall okay what is the game of perfect recall each player remember that's past information and it's past action so consider a game of perfect recall then every mixed strategy has an equivalent behavioral strategy that tells you why information structure is so important
okay so so i'm considering a game of perfect recall i know that a mixed strategy equilibrium would always exist so what kunz theorem say is that well there is also an equilibrium in behavioral strategies right and remember behavioral strategy did not suppress the dynamic nature of information and decision making okay and what kunz theorem is saying well you might have a mixed strategy equilibrium that's fine but you can also construct an equivalent behavioral strategy and i'll define what equivalent means okay but you can construct an equivalent behavioral strategy that's going to give you the same payoff okay so then you're preserving the dynamic nature of information in this particular situation in a game of perfect recall you can come up with a behavioral strategy that's also uh, equilibrium and what i mean by this equivalent strategy is that each of these leaves will receive the same probability distribution no matter whether you act according to a mixed strategy or you act according to a behavioral strategy okay which is equivalent to that mixed strategy is that clear okay yeah Yes. Yes. It's not always true. There are always games where you cannot find an equivalent behavioral strategy corresponding to a mixed strategy equilibrium. But if the game is a game of perfect recall where each player remembers its past information and past actions, you can always construct an equivalent behavioral strategy. Okay? So I'm debating right now whether I want to cover the Uh, not the proof but some main ideas about the proof of kunz theorem or not uh so let's see what what i do in the next class uh, it's fairly technical uh but and lots of trees and conditional probabilities and so on so i might just skip it if i don't find a easy way of expressing the proof in like uh, in a compact way then i'll just skip the proof and uh, and we'll move on to the next topic which is stackelberg game and uh, and then we'll talk about so either i'll do the proof of kunz theorem or i'll talk about stackelberg games in the next class any question on what we did today okay so all of you understand normal form games right you suppress the dynamic nature of decision making uh, you understand mixed strategy and behavioral strategy in mixed strategy you have suppressed the dynamic nature of information in behavioral strategy you randomize every time you have to choose an action okay i mean you have an option of randomizing every time you choose an action and in game of perfect recall every mixed strategy has an equivalent behavioral strategy okay so i'll see you guys after the long weekend